Good morning and welcome to the Sunday School version of the Abundant Love Stream. I am Gary Bush Jr. To my right, I have Elder Greg Smith. And we will be digging into the lesson that is called the Day of Atonement. It is found in the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, verses 1 through 16. Um, I will have Elder Greg pray for us, and then we will get into the lesson. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this blessed day that you made. We're truly rejoicing and we're glad. And we ask you, Lord, to look over us, Lord, as we speak of your word, Lord, as we go through this lesson. May it be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, we got quite a few verses here. <laughs> So I will read verses one through nine, and then you'll tackle 10 through 16. All right. I, you want me to help read? <laughs> you can help read if you want. <laughs> Grab the book. All right. I'm going to read um, verses one through five. Elder Smith will read six through 12, and then Bishop will read 13 through 16. All right, Leviticus chapter 16, verses 1 through 5 read. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place, within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in a cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be girded with a linen girdle, and with the linen mighty shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering, and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, and one lot for the Lord, the other lot for the scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord lot, the Lord's lot fell, and offer him for a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement for him and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. Verse 12. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil. Verse 13, and he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, and the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Verse 14, and he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. And before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times. Verse 15. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people 
and bring his blood within the veil and do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Verse 16 says, and he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins and so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanness. All right. Um, thank you, Bishop, for reading for us. You're welcome. <laughs> um, as I was kind of reading over this lesson throughout the week, it just amazes me how God always finds a way to try to let us get right with our sins. Um, the Day of Atonement is basically God's way of allowing the children of Israel to be forgiven for their sins. Mm -hmm. um, yes. The book of Exodus, you know, gave us you know, the Ten Commandments. And if you read throughout Leviticus, there's a lot of laws and different <laughs> variations of the simple commandments that God gave us because the children of Israel just, just wanted to do their own way so much. And so there was a lot of different things that they were trying to navigate for pretty much, well, what about this? Well, I know we can't do this, but what can we do this? We can do this, we can't do this. And so there was a lot of stuff that was going on. And you know, if we jump all the way forward in Romans, the wages of sin is death. So there has to be a sacrifice um, in order to pay for your sins. And right here, um, God was giving them specific instructions of what to do, what to use in order to atone their transgressions, their sins. Um, Elder Smith, as you were studying the lesson, the first question I always ask is, um, what did you kind of want to dig out of the lesson today and bring forth this morning as you were studying throughout the week? What I saw was it was something how the Lord had, God had to make it specific what they had to do as far as for Aaron to make an atonement for the sins of the people mm -hmm. and for his own household. It was like this has to be done constantly mm -hmm. because the sin is not going. God knew the sin wasn't going away. Right. You know, because this goes back. Sin goes back uh, to the first two people mm -hmm. the, that he made. But he knew the sins wasn't going away. So he had to keep making rules for them at this time. We think way back then they didn't have it like as good as we have it. So therefore he had to meet them on their own level of what they understood mm -hmm. as far as with sacrifices and uh, you know the killing of the animals you know just think if we had to bring animals in the sanctuary today <laughs> it would not be pleasant mm -hmm. so that's what i got from this all right and also joining well i shouldn't say also but <laughs> but coming to join on the panel is um the calvin yeah, and so the going. question the first the question that i always ask is as you were studying the lesson throughout the week what did you kind of want to bring out in the lesson today was there anything that kind of caught your eye uh yeah a lot of things caught my eye <laughs> um but most of the things that kind of like spoke to me like organization order um and then like knowing what the atonement actually meant mm -hmm. was big we hear it all the time you know growing up in church you hear about it but once you get to read and learn about it, you understand the significance of the atonement and what was really going on at that time. So that's what kind of stood out to me, the organization, um, the order, and then what you have with the atonement. Mm -hmm. So pretty much, you know, as we talked about last week's lesson with the Nadab and Abihu, after their deaths, um, pretty much nobody is above being punished for your sins. Right. Um, they were ordained, they were priests, they were high in authority, and you know they went above and beyond what God had ordained them to do as proper service. 
and it cost him your life. That's why God had to institute your day of atonement. He was like, you know, like Elder Greg was saying, um, since the beginning of time, since Adam and Eve, they literally put sin in our DNA. And so, um, and, it, and, and it's funny you say that because it goes back to what the serpent says. You, sh you will not surely die. Like you won't physically die <laughs> if you eat from the fruit. But what's going to happen is, is you're going to be separated from God. Like God cannot walk with you if you disobey him. But he loves you so much, he wants you to try to get back with him so you can walk with him. But there has to be a punishment for blatant disobedience to God. And so, but even then in the punishment, he still gives you a chance to make it right. And in this lesson, we kind of dig into that, you know, how they were supposed to go forth. And, um, you know, you know, the day of, like you said, is continual. So this day of atonement was like a reoccurring event where you're gonna get the, the best animals and you know dress them up and, and so we'll kind of dig into that a little bit. If we look at um, verse three, Aaron shall come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Um, kind of explain, Elder Greg, if you could, the different um, offerings that they had between the bullock for sin and the ram burnt offering. The bullock for the sin was for, that offering was um, to atone for mm -hmm. the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. The ram was what, what it says here, to the holy place, a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. It's a difference here because the burnt offering was for to go before the Lord. Right. It was to be the Lord's offering. Mm -hmm. the, the, the bullock was for the sin of the people. Mm -hmm. It was for their sin, but right. it was in, the burnt offering was in a way of recognizing God in all of this and saying, this one is for you. It's also for our sins, but it's, it's basically for you to show you that we appreciate you and asking you for forgiveness right. and to look the other way. You want to kind of expound on that, Kyle? Uh, I found it interesting the way that it was actually set up because of the different animals that were grown mm -hmm. in different things. He, yeah. could, he just didn't go grab a lamb and say, hey, this lamb is slaughtered for the sins of the people. Mm -hmm. He actually asked for a bull to be gone mm -hmm. for the sins. And those sins are for the priest. That's why that had to be a bull. Then he had the burnt offering. And he said, hey, like you said, God, this is, this is for you. But I couldn't give this to you until I did to kill this and sacrifice this bullock so you can accept something from me because you couldn't accept something from me because I wasn't holy. I couldn't mm -hmm. step into that holy ground. So it just set up, like I said before, the order of how things had to go. So he's setting it up to let us know what actually was going on and to take place before we can do certain things with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing the goat to atone for the sins of the people was not sufficient and of itself to heal the nation's sins. Um, sin had to be banished. And most of the time, back then, goats were considered unclean animals. And so to sacrifice, to, to, to use a, a bullock for the sin offering is pretty much you putting all your sins into this already unclean animal. So we're going to escape our, we're going to put all our sins in this animal. And since it's already unclean, then we'll sacrifice that. But then with the ram, um, you know, we talk about the ram in the bush. And, you know, this is, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to, you know, have a chance to for, be forgiven for my sins. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, what, what we do now, you know, we don't, thank God we don't have to sacrifice, you know, 
our best things. Could you, I couldn't even imagine, you know, Lord, I'm going to burn my car. You forgive me for my sins. Or I'm, I'm going to sacrifice one of my kids or uh, uh, one of my, you know, <laughs> one of, one of my, my prized possessions because I sin all the time. So if there was like a day in the week or a day in the month where you have to sacrifice something that you really, really need to be forgiven for your sins, thank God for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> but, you know, back then they, they legit had to like sacrifice their best stuff. And I think about, um, I think about Cain and Abel when they were offering up their offerings to God. Um, 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 Abel gave his best and he gave it with a glad heart. And Cain was, he didn't have the heart Abel had. And God just looked on Abel's heart, looked on his sacrifice, and he chose that. But here, God is giving specific instructions of how to give, how to sacrifice, you know, what to what to wear. Um, verse 5, and he shall take the, the, the congregation of the children of Israel, two kids of the goat for sin offering, and one lamb for burnt offering. Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. Take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle and the congregation. And shall cast lots upon the two goats and a lot for the Lord and a lot for the scapegoat. What Kyle said earlier is order. God is so specific and not just that, he has an order of which they were supposed to do this. Um, I want to talk about just the state of the people of Israel um, because I want to try to correlate them then to us now and you know, how, you know, I know Jesus kind of atoned for all our sins so we don't have to do that, but there's a correlation between what we have to do in order to, you know, be forgiven and try to, you know, stay away from. Because what I want, what I want to get to, and it's not just a day of atonement, that's the lesson, but what I want to get to is not taking advantage of the grace and mercy that God gives us. But we'll get to that later. Um, Elder Greg, try to, um, if you could, if we go to verse you know, 10 and 11, where it's talking about the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, pre presented alive before the Lord, taking atonement for him, and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. The wilderness. Why do you think that um, that scapegoat had to go into the wilderness? Because it's like we serve a forgiving God. Right. And if he had everything sacrificed and slaughtered before him, it would be like there's no forgiveness for our sins. Mm -hmm. We can sin and God going to take us out. But by him having that scapegoat to let loose and let him know God had mercy, that was, he was a merciful God. He, he allowed the scapegoat this, as a sacrifice, but yet still he should still allow the goat to live. Right. That's good. That's good. Um, Kyle, you want to add to that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it also says with the scapegoat that sin had to be banished from the community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wouldn't use the word scapegoat now, like you the person that <laughs> took the blame for. Yeah. So, you know, like sometimes you'll do it, you'll probably do it with your kids, you'll do it with other people that you really care about. And that's what God was signifying. Like he really loved us enough. He was just like, you know what? Take this goat and send it off into the wilderness because y'all have sacrificed enough people and you didn't, you didn't got my attention. Now we need to send a body here. So who can I get to blame this on and get them on out of here? So instead of telling like Aaron or a high priest to go ahead and leave because he knew the people needed him, he said, put put that on this goat and tell it to go and just give it free because you don't need that around you guys. And, right. and that's exactly like that significance of that second goat. So now 
not only is God looking in and saying, you did what I told you to do, now I can look in and everybody's clean because you didn't took the sin and left the city. Right. right. Yeah. And so you don't, you won't have to be reminded of all the sins because yeah. you don't see this goat anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. So like you just said, it's a way to not only um, you know, atone for your sins, but not kill the goat, but instead cover the goat with the you know, with the cloud of the incense. So I mean, so what happens is they go to this altar and they put forth these animals and with the incense, which I think is really significant because incense carries a strong odor. Yes. And it's a it's a it's more of a cleansing odor. Um a lot of people burn incense today and you know whatever reasons for that. Um, <laughs> we won't get into that, but a, a, a lot of people just burn it because it just have a a, 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 a soothing smell for the house. And you know, um and if you go, if you fast forward to the New Testament, um, the women who were going to, you know, clean off Jesus' body, they brought incense and they brought other things to clean his body off. So um, that is really significant that they would use that particular um, odor, that particular smell during the sacrifices. Um, and it always goes back to just God just being of complete perfect order because there were specific things like there were holy garments that they had to wear. There were specific animals and what to do with them. Um, and it just, just God, like he really, really wants to love us and wants us to be right with him. And throughout the Bible, throughout time, he always finds some kind of way in order to let us get right. No, no, he does have to punish us. No, sin can't be, you know, forgotten without punishment. Um, now, once you're covered, you know, by Jesus' blood, of, of course, then, you know, he doesn't look at you with that sin. But there's a process that you have to go through in order to get to the covering. And this is pretty much it. Um, we're about, what, 13 and 14? Is there anything in the First, uh, first ten to fifth, twenty or twelve verses that we didn't cover. That you guys want to go back and cover? What I would say about the incense. The one thing the incense do when he threw it on the fire, and it brought smoke. Yeah. yeah. And and one thing about something, the, the smell of incense, it brings in a, not just an aroma, but it also helps to set the mood. Yeah. You know, you know so. It had to be done in a certain way. He didn't want the smell of the blood to fill the altar, mm -hmm. yes, you know, because then it would have been a stench. Yes. At the same time, he had to cover the smell with the incense. Mm -hmm. um, sprinkling the blood with his fingers seven times. We always talk about seven is the number of completion. That was a verse that I wanted to dig into. Um, and, like, and, and that is a perfect segue between um, what you just said about the blood and the stint of it and setting the mood. Because if it was just all blood, then there kind of wouldn't be, um, there probably wouldn't have been the right mind frame because without the incense, you know, you just, all you would see was just blood and, you know. And the smell of it. Right. And so I want to 
And so here it says, the mercy seat was the lid that rested on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Then inside it were items that, reminiscent of human skin, um, men that the children of Israel complained about, things of that nature. And so it was, so Aaron was to dip his finger in the blood of the bull and sprinkle it seven times on the mercy seat. And if you go all the way back to Eden, you know, pretty much God has always required, you know, blood to atone for sin. God made animal skins in order to cover Adam and Eve's shame. So he's always, um, until Jesus, they all, he's always used animals as a sacrifice, as a way to cover for sins. Um, God wants us <laughs> to just get right with him. Amen. And he always gives us a way. Um, let me see. We say we're merciful, God. We do. We say we're merciful. That's why he always gives us an outlet where we don't have to be offered ourselves as a sacrifice yeah. on his altar. You know, when he gives us with uh, forgiveness, repentance, you know, that we don't have to kill animals. Yeah to go before him. Mm -hmm. yeah, at this time, they had to offer sacrifices. What did they have but animals? True. Right. You know, because of the gold and silver would not would not do it because it, it would perish and, and they still could use it again. So I just thank God for being merciful yeah. way back then. So, let me find that. And so, kind of explain what the mercy seat was, because that was pretty much right next to the Ark of the Covenant. So the mercy seat is very significant because if you look throughout the Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant is pretty much serious, a sacred thing. And that's pretty much where you put the, 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 um, the build the altars next to, and they always basically, they had to carry that around. So. Talk about in verse 15, where one of the one again says, you know, kill the goat of the sin offering, and that's for the people, and then bring his blood within the veil, and do with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock, and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat, and before the mercy seat. So in that verse, of course, they kill they kill the animals and, and they sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat. So it pretty much says, um, okay, we've made the sacrifice, we've you know laid the incense. So now here's the here's the, the cloud of smoke of the incense, and then after that, the sacrifice has been made, and so then that makes the atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation, and there remaineth among them in the midst of their uncleanliness. So I just kind of jumped back and forth a little bit, but um, the order of the Day of Atonement starts with um, the holy garments and bringing them to the mercy seat, which is pretty much at the Ark of the Covenant. Um, what do you think is the most significant process in this whole order? Because I believe, like you said, God is merciful. God has got an order. But in this, in this day of atonement, the thing that I believe should be here is the mentality of I really need to be forgiven for my sins. Um, yes, it is a day where you know they got together. It's kind of like when we take communion. Um, you don't want to just do it just as a going through the motions, right? Um, and that's kind of where I wanted to get to because you know there's always something that you can take from any lesson in the Bible and make it plain. Um, so. Before I get into that, is there anything 
that we didn't hit on that you want to kind of cover? No, I think that when you were asking or and traveling down the road where you're getting to, um, all of the process is important. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything that could Any be skipped. Right. Yeah, just right. like when you were talking about doing communion. I think that all has to be mm -hmm. done the right way. We can't skip singing the song because then we don't set the atmosphere. Right. We can't skip praying for the blood and for the body because then we don't show reverence. Then when we take it, we just can't take it nonchalantly and be like, okay, yeah, thank you, God, and be done with it because it's not just a, okay, yeah, thanks, and keep going type of moment. Nothing should be a, okay, yeah, thanks to God anyway. We have to sit there and look at that, like we said before the order, and now that we're doing communion and we're in that mode, I just can't come in. Like you, when you read this passage, you couldn't just step into the holy place when you wanted to. There had to be smoke there because God had to come in to get it, so we can't look at him because if you see him, in this state, you will die. So not only are the incense set in the mood, you got the aroma, you don't smell everything. Plus it's setting that smoke screen for you. Cause he's like, if I come down there and get this, you cannot see me. So you will pass away, you will surely die. You've seen me, so let me put something in order. So everything that you have to do to take the steps makes it significant. And if you've ever been somewhere or you've ever been to a church service and you feel it's heavy, that's because order hasn't been set in place yet. So if we didn't order everything right, then we can't praise right, then we can't bring him in the right way. I'm not saying he's not going to be here. You just didn't bring him in the right way. So something has to be set in order for it to happen. So kind of like on that point, which you are moving through very well, it's just that I don't think we can just throw like, hey, you don't have to put those garments on. Because they didn't go in with the flashiest garments like they do when they're out with people. Because when you're in front of the people, you wear the flashy garments so they know, oh, that's the person that does this. Right. You, how you gonna outdress God? <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta come in as humble as you need to come in so he knows what's going on. So you know what's going on. You know how you feel when you wake up and you feel like you're sharp. So you're like, okay, I look good today. You got your head up too high. You don't wanna walk into the holy of the holy thinking that you can't be touched. So it's just that setting, and God knows this. He knows what we have. He knows our heart. We made in his image, so he knows that I can't let Kyle just go do this because then that's going to make Kyle feel like Kyle did it, mm -hmm. not that I helped him do it. Mm -hmm. So all that is set up in order to mm -hmm. kind of do that. So I don't think if anything can really be skipped, and I think that's some of the problem that we have now is that we say stuff like, oh, it don't take that long to praise God, or, you know, you don't have to tarry in the spirit anymore, or anything like that. Like, we're just breaking down some of the things because we just want to get out of somewhere mm -hmm. too quick instead of actually setting up reverence and doing things in order. Mm -hmm. I don't think you could take anything away from the process that God has set forth mm -hmm. for the Day of Atonement mm -hmm. and get done properly if the priest didn't go in right, he would fall dead. Mm -hmm. If he didn't go through all the process, it would not be, the sins would not be forgiven. Right. And that would bring detriment to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like in verse 4 where it talks about um, what they had to wear. Yeah. Because a lot of times, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying that the way you dress will send you to heaven or send you to hell. I'm not saying that. But there was an order of how you were supposed to come before the presence of the Lord. You want to dress your best. Like you said, you can't outdress God. And then sometimes if that's all you have, um, if that's all you have to wear, then by all means do that because at the end of the day, it's not about what you wear. It's about your heart. It's about allowing God to come in and you know, you know, you know, take control and you know, guide you, lead you, you know, let the Holy Ghost lead you, accept Jesus Christ. But once you have accepted him, you should want to present yourself before God, come into his place, come into his house the best way you can. You want to the, the Almighty God, you want to be pretty much on your P's and Q's, on your eight game, if you want to say. 
Um, so the holy garments were the holy linen coat, um, which is one is flesh, um, but just verse four was literally, you know, holy garments, you know, look, just look presentable. Yeah. Um, be your best for God. And I believe um, it just it just sets a place of order. When we take communion, um, I watch our bishop set up the elders, set up the ministers, set up the deacons in order because we want to make sure we are at our absolute best when we go before God because sin is literally the downfall of God's creation. And so if we're going to atone for blatant disobedience, because that's what sin is. Sin is blatant disobedience. If we're going to atone for that, why not do everything we can to make sure God accepts our sacrifice, God accepts us. Um, and so back then, they had to make sure, like you said, like you said, every single step was followed to the T. And not only that, you were serious about it because if the priest didn't do it right, they go in there and fall dead because God has nothing to be played with. Right. Um, he takes sin serious. And so if, if so if I'm the God, if I'm God, I don't want to say that. But you know, <laughs> if but yeah, if <laughs> but, but but God is a God is like, well, if I'm going to allow you to be forgiven of blatantly disobeying me, you have to do everything right. You have to make sure that not only everything is right, but your heart is right too. Yeah. And I and God says, I know your heart. So yes, yes, you can yes. just come in, like you said, with communion, yeah. you can just come in, just go through the motions. Okay, it's, and so and so with the carnal mind, just a little, little piece of cracker and some grape juice. Yeah. It don't take all that. Why do we have to sing? Why do we have to wear all black? Why do we have to wear all white? Why is it so serious? Why, why do we do this? And so, but, but to those who know, to those who understand the sacrifice in Jesus becoming a scapegoat. Yes. And Jesus literally stepping out of eternity from the presence of God to take on and become sin. Yeah. See, when you understand that, and it's just like back then, when you understand the Day of Atonement, and the specific things that God told you to do with the specific animals and how to sacrifice them. You know, what to do next, what order to go through, the garments that you're supposed to wear. Then you can understand why it's so important, why it's so serious. Um, and it, like I said in the introduction, Jesus Christ came to provide the ultimate, final, and permanent atonement for our sins yes. in the way that abolish the old sacrificial systems. Like I said earlier, aren't you glad that we don't have to sacrifice ourselves or sacrifice any of our loved ones or any of our possessions? Yeah. Um, now we do make sacrifices. We sacrifice our time. We might put our plate down. We might not watch TV for a while. We might do things in order to spend more time in the presence of God, but that's because we know him, but we don't literally have to pay for our sins because we can't. Yeah. yeah. Jesus did that. And when you talk about Jesus basically paying it all, like we say all the time and not trying to just throw that out there, but literally paying for it all yeah. when it comes down to it. He even had order in what he had to do yes. with his own blood. Mm -hmm. He just didn't be like, okay, I'm dead. Here you go, God. Like, thanks, Dad. No, he didn't come to God like that. He had to put his blood in a certain place. He had to go and do certain things before he could even take his blood to him. He went down to hell, got the keys from hell. Like he had a order for him to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's been set up all the time. You can't tell me that you can't do this order if Jesus had to do a certain order mm -hmm. after his basically atonement for all of us. So there's always been an order in place. And when you talk about like even the clothing, it says right here, no mortal sinner was able to enter into the presence of the holy God and survive. Even Aaron would have suffered the same fate as his sons <laughs> if he would have entered the holy on right. his own means. So, there, you know what I'm saying? Everything had to be set up for that. Mm -hmm. And you're touching on these points. And I know we get to expound on these points when you touch on them, but I don't think people understand when you don't break it down as simple 
as we get to break it down on here. So it makes a lot of sense and order has always been set up. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's reasons for the order that God has placed here. Yes, Just sir. like there are reasons for the order that he has set in place when Jesus died. Yes, sir. They had to be orders set for, for us to follow. We can't run rough, rough shot yep. in the house of the Lord. We yes, thank sir. God that we don't have to send someone in to sacrifice their life for our sins because mm -hmm. Jesus died for that. Absolutely. You know, and we're, we're, we're truly fortunate yeah. to be here in the time that we're here. Mm -hmm. These people here, they complain about manner, mm -hmm. about being fed. Mm -hmm. We're thankful to have, we have choices yeah, on what we can eat, yes. where we can live, yeah. you know, and, and what we can wear. We have choices. They didn't have the choices that we had at that time uh, because of their radical, sinful nation, nature. Yeah. You know, they didn't have the guidance yeah. that we have also. We have so much set before us to show us right and wrong, yeah. mm -hmm. to show us the consequences of our sins, True. to show us that if we don't live a certain way, then this is what we have to face. You know, not just one day a year. True. <laughs> right. Not right. just for one day a year, but as for a life, for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you said that because this was like a specific day picked out to do this. Um, and so people, you know, who possibly, you know, didn't make the day like they had sinned or they were they were preparing to get to the day of atonement and let's say they died before they got to that atonement you know god forbid you know so it, it goes back to today you know you waiting and waiting and waiting to let's say you know every first sunday we have communion and so you do all this stuff you disobey you might not repent but you're waiting to do that for communion if you don't make it to communion, then, and you die, you might not make it to heaven because you didn't ask for forgiveness. Now, we don't need a specific day, like Elder Smith just said, to be forgiven. The Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Same thing, Lord, forgive me every single day because I sin every single day. I do something wrong every day. Now I don't I don't blatantly like like you say God said don't do this. I do this on purpose. Like I, I, I you try not to blatantly disobey God, but every single day, whether it's sins of commission, sins of omission, you have to ask for forgiveness every day. Every Lord, day. Lord, forgive me. If I do something wrong, if I said something every that day. I shouldn't have said, if I thought something. Clean me every day so that if I do die, if I do pass on, I don't have anything I regret. I don't have anything that you can be displeased about. I want to make sure I please you every day. And Jesus gave us that covering so that when we do, when God does see us, he doesn't see all the sins, all the thoughts, all the things that we said, all the things that we did that didn't please him. What he seen is the blood. And the blood covered, <laughs> the blood covers us just like the incense and the cloud of smoke covered the, 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 the scapegoat, covered the animals. It, Jesus literally said, okay, you can't pay for your sins. Your blood is dirty, but I can. I'm going to put myself yep. in the flesh that I created that disobeyed me. <laughs> And then I'm going to be the scapegoat. Yeah. Put all your sin on me. Yeah. Jesus said, cast all your cares on yeah. me for I care for you. That's literally what we did. Cast our cares. We put all our problems. We put our sin. He became sin for us. The ultimate. So it only, and like you said, how can I come before God and, 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 and be on some kind of way yeah. when he literally paid for my sins? Yeah. And it's like, I should want to be able to um, come before him the best way I can. If he says anything, try your best to do it. 
Because at the end of the day, if it's not for him, we don't have a chance at eternal life in heaven. Amen. Um, this is a really good lesson. It's really detailed. It's really um, in depth. There's a lot of different things that we can take from this lesson. Um, once again, is there anything that we didn't cover or that we just kind of breached over that you want to go back and cover, that you want to kind of hit at? That scapegoat. Okay. Oh, yeah. That scapegoat. Oh, yeah. Had not been for them, for God allowing it. A scapegoat. Mm -hmm. Then the rules would be tighter. Mm -hmm. There would be more to pay for mm -hmm. without it being room for repentance Amen. today. Mm -hmm. Today we can repent and still yet live. But without that scapegoat, everything we do or didn't do yeah. that the Lord has prescribed for us to do would really be detriment to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we would have nowhere to run until we got it right. All right. That's good. That's good. Real good. Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to pull out real quick? <laughs> yes, Griff, that was good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think also, like, I don't think that we touched on the responsibility that Aaron really had to do at those times. Like they set up everything on that one person and we don't have to do that anymore. Once we read the word, we know the word and we confess with our heart, you know, or confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died for our sins, we can come to God that way. Everybody else had to wait for that day. <laughs> it was like, hey, Aaron, it's today. <laughs> like, it's two days. I, I got to hurry up and talk. Like, it's two days need to come because I did. So now it's different for that. So Aaron had that responsibility. And uh, pastor talks about it all the time. Bishop talks about it all the time. Of how people that are in that position of being a pastor have more responsibility. And that was set up on Aaron. And mm -hmm. everybody, Moses, they were responsible for the congregation. Mm -hmm. And that's why he says that. But now he's not personally responsible to be like, all right, two days, we can talk. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, next month, we can talk. Once a year, come on, we're going to sit down here, all the body in one day, mm -hmm. come on to me so we can talk. Now it's like, I gave you that word, now you can talk to God. And Jesus is here right. for us. And right. that that's a big change in dynamic. Mm -hmm. So I'm not waiting mm -hmm. for someone else. I can go to God for myself and say, forgive yeah. me. And like you were saying, just that constant mm -hmm. everyday forgiveness and moving towards that mark. That is. And though that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot yeah. of pressure. Like, hey, <laughs> I I got a whole bunch of sins. You gotta get this right for me. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't make the man of God God. Yes. It makes you I mean, of course, the Bible says, I will give you pastors as my own heart. And so you, you need you need your pastor for a specific word, but you have to have a relationship with God yourself. Because sometimes, you know, if you can't get to God, mm -hmm. if you can't get to your pastor, mm -hmm. if you believe that your pastor is the only way that you can get to God, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. Yes, yeah. so that's true. You're in a lot of trouble. And back then, I could see what you just said, how they could have used Aaron and Moses as, okay, well, I can't talk to God myself, so I have to get to Aaron yep. in order to get to God. Yep. Now, you don't have that. Jesus came and died, and Jesus said, I'm going to leave my spirit for you. So now, you have a piece of me with you all the time. Always. So I'm constantly you know, talking to you, guiding you. My spirit is me, me. I am my father. So yeah. you have a connection to my father through me, through my spirit. Hey, big bro, talk to dad for me. Yeah. And so that's, <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Jesus, Jesus was not only the ultimate sacrifice, he's just the ultimate example. Yeah. Because everything, like other Greg said earlier, Jesus had an order that he had to do for God, you know, death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. 
none of none of our sins are paid for if all three of those things didn't happen. And even before then, Jesus laid out the perfect example of how we should live. He was yeah. tempted in every way. In every way. He showed us that not only you don't have to not just sacrifice animals, but the Mosaic law. If you sin, you can get stoned. Yeah. Jesus came in and said, okay, whoever's without sin, get the first stone. <laughs> so Jesus, Jesus literally changed an entire doctrine of order with just bringing in grace and mercy and forgiveness. The spirit, man. Yeah. Jesus like, you know what? I'm the scapegoat. Yeah. I'm going to die for you. He I'm, showed Yeah. Yeah, he showed it plenty of times. Yes. Yeah. Plenty of times he showed it. Yeah. <laughs> and and when you think when you think about it, it's like he didn't have to. Nope. Like God did not have to give them a day of atonement. Correct. Yeah. Correct. He could have just passed judgment on yeah. yeah. I'm the Almighty. I created you. you didn't I listen. say don't do it. If you do it, that's yeah. it. That's <laughs> it. Yeah. And I he just, would be fair in doing that. Yeah. I thank God I didn't live in the Old Testament Ooh, time. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Life, yeah. death, yeah. resurrection. Absolutely. Yes, <laughs> because then what happens is, especially today, you put agendas on people with power so um they'll make sure that you know if, if they don't like you your sins will come out first yeah. and so if people who could just probably could just made a simple mistake up oh, no out here stone yeah yeah with jesus jesus is like well yeah you did sin but yeah yeah, yeah. but i gave you a chance because i died but we do thank God for the day of atonement. Absolutely. For Absolutely. Mm -hmm. A way of confessing and being forgiven for their sins. Mm -hmm. Because God is God is merciful. It paved the way. It, yes. <laughs> yeah. God, 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 God is merciful. God does not sit on the throne and say, I want to send you to hell. <laughs> well, he, he, he says his rule is love. Yeah. So if, if, if we need love one to another, he wasn't going to not love you and show mm -hmm. you, not show right. you love. He has to show you love. He can't say something. He can't lie. Right. So if he's saying that that is love, love is what he needs and what he wants to show mm -hmm. everybody. So I can't say you do something and you're just done. You don't do that with your kids. And he's right. our father. Mm -hmm. There's no way that you see a kid, even if that isn't your kid, that's the compassion and love that you have, period will tell you to correct the kid. You're not gonna see a kid with a fork about to stick it into a light socket. But man, he about to be messed up. You know? <laughs> right, he right. gonna stop him. Like that's that compassion and that's what God was doing. God was just like, you know what y'all my people? I did so much for y'all even though we're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't see all of you guys perish. So what can mm -hmm. I do? Mm -hmm. Because I love you guys to make you stay here and that you can love me just the way that I love you. He has mm -hmm. And so God's from the throne. Seeing them, you know, seeing, seeing them, uh, their uncleanliness. He was like, you know what? I got to do something to save my people. This is what I'm going to do. But in doing that, in, 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 in this day of atonement, uh, there are specific things that you have to do. You already messed up. Yep. So don't mess this up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so like there's, there's as merciful and as loved as he is, there's a leash to his... Yeah. So, so you know, you can't like so you can't take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Like you know, okay, you sinned. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't kill you, yeah. which I could have. But this day right here is important. You get this right, yeah. and that's and, and that's what parents do. You know, parents allow you to do so much, and then you cross one line. Okay, that's it. That's it. Yeah. But they always love you, no matter. What? Because unconditional love, like you want to see your children do right and succeed. And when they, you know, when they, when they disobey, of course, yeah. it disappoints you, but God always has a way. I think about how God knew, even with the Day of Atonement, it was not going to clear up the sin nature of the people. Mm -hmm. But yet, still, it's a way of putting them in subjection right. and keeping him that's on their mind, I, I, you know, that's good. I, we got to go before the Lord with this, with our sins. We we got that day coming. Right. <laughs> right. You know, if we do three hundred sixty-four. We do wrong. We got this day. One day. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. to take it before the Lord. Start over yeah. again. Start over again. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully it makes a difference. Yeah, because it just, it gives you a sense of hope. Yeah. Like I got a clean slate. So um, <laughs> it's, it's like a it's like a New Year's resolution. <laughs> and they talk in there that it was yeah. like their new yeah. Year's. Like that was the it's new like, year's like I did, I did all this stuff wrong, but now I got a newfound another fire. Change. I got another chance. Let's get it right. And then, you know, some of them use it as, well, I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm clean now. I'm going to go on back to what, you know, I was doing. But for the ones who actually change their mind and stick to it, I'm clean. And not only that, I learned from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. So let me move as far away from my mistakes as I can. So I can be as clean and as holy before God as I can. Because I don't want God to say, I never knew. Well, we are getting ready to go ahead and close this lesson. I want to thank um, Minister Greg. I want to thank um, Deacon Kyle for joining me. Did you guys have any closing remarks before we get ready to close? I just thank God for Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. One thing, I thank God for Jesus. Life, death, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Definitely thank God for Jesus. But in the passage for myself and my spiritual growth and with this, just knowing that the order of everything mm -hmm. and the way that God set it up for us to be able, even back then, to be able to come to him one day or now every day with the blood of Christ. Mm -hmm. Like I just the order that had to happen meant so much to me. I agree. Mm -hmm. I thank God that despite all our wrongs, he always gives us a chance to get it right. Um, there's always a way. And ultimately, Jesus was the way. And so I thank God that I don't have to sacrifice or kill, or, or kill anything in order to get it right with God. All I have to do is have a sincere mind, a sincere heart, and actually repent. And I know that I'm forgiven for everything that I've done. Amen. Um, that was our Sunday school stream. It's about 1030. We will start our morning worship at 11 a.m. Thank you for tuning in. I see a lot of comments on the Sunday school. Thanks for watching. Um, once again, I am Gary Bush Jr. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you on our stream at 11 a.m.